Like you're talking about a panic attack. You, you you explained a little bit about your thought process and how you got in there. I want people to really get a vivid image of what it looks like so that they can really spot it if they see it. So can you take me through if you're comfortable, bro? Yeah. Like what what are you doing in that moment? What are you saying in that moment? Like and then um like how are you how are you feeling? Yeah, I remember laughing, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was just something that was kind of funny, but mm -hmm. I was just laughing. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, bro, chill out, mm -hmm. chill out. And then it just, I just remember a switch. And then when I say a thousand thought, like what I thought was like, you know, sometimes you see, you know, folks who are less fortunate that might be on the street that might not have, um, you know, mental health support, right? Mm -hmm. And you and you see them talking to themselves, and mm -hmm. and you see them with episodes, right? Mm -hmm. That's how I felt, right? Mm -hmm. And I honestly felt like I was gonna be that guy on the street. To be honest, mm -hmm. it was every single thought, whether it was what was going on in life, what I should have done in life, what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. the stresses. It was just literally thought after thought, and I my mind couldn't keep up. Mm. And um, it just got to a point I was breathing heavy. Mm. Um, I was crying. Mm. I was emotional. So many different emotions. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, and then going back to like, I just felt like a sense of disappointment as well, right? Mm. It was like, man, I've worked so hard in my life to get to where I'm at. And I have so much more I want to do. And now I'm in a situation where I might not be able to accomplish that, right? Mm. So I, I just felt like I was laying down my family, uh, my wife, like my like everybody, right? Right. Like so, for me, it was just a moment of like constant thoughts, and not being able to control them, not being able to control your emotions, not being able really to control your body. I remember being on the floor, like, like curled yeah, up. Yeah, curled up, and. Damn. Um, yeah, if it wasn't for them comforting me and getting me to that point where I kind of just got me to a comfortable place where I kind of like dozed off. Right. And then I was, my body was, and mind was able to kind of reset. reset. But I, yeah. even after that point, I felt like um, I was very sensitive like to, mm. to stress. Like I mm. felt like I was on the verge of like Had happening it again. again right? Yeah. Uh, and that's when I was like, yeah, I can't let this happen again. Right? Mm. I, I felt like it was a blessing that I got through that. Yeah. Because I really thought it was kind of like over for me. Right. In, in regard to my my mental like capacity. And um, yeah. Man, yeah. I'm so glad you, you, you can, you're able to speak openly about this, bro, because I was just talking to uh, Ariane. For sure. Um, what she, what she was saying is Ariane, she's a she's a psychotherapist. She works with entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that deal with stress and all that kind of stuff. She was mentioning how a lot of black men have panic attacks. Yeah. And then you come and now you're sitting down and you're in the it's same crazy. couch, same yeah. chair, and you're mentioning like, yo, I went through actual yeah. panic attacks. So it's like coming around full circle for me, bro. Um, geez, bro, like I, I wanted to ask you about what was happening coming into that moment, like, can you reverse engineer the environment that created mm. the panic attack? You get what I'm saying? Like, For sure. Like, I'm not just talking about the day of, I'm talking about like, what was the, what situations were you going through during that time? I think you kind of spoke to it, but I want you to get a little bit deeper because I want some black man that may be potentially in those situations yeah. to see like, yo, if I don't stop, this yeah. is potentially where it could lead. You get what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. Being in a place like LA, right, where mm -hmm. you don't, you know, I was fortunate to kind of get connected uh, with some of my fraternity brothers, but like the the folks that you grow up with, your family, like it's just it was just me and my wife, honestly, out mm -hmm. there. So sometimes those are outlets, right? Having yeah. those, being able to call your homie or like let's go out for drinks and let's let's talk about this, that type of that didn't really exist, right? And right. I was still getting comfortable in that space. I had moved there in 2017, so like two years, you know, it kind of goes fast, right? right. Um, so I just felt like we were doing well, but we were just getting by. And that's like the common theme in LA. It's like, you might make the most money that you've made in your life, mm. but 
you know, you lose your job and within a within a month, yeah. you know, you on the, you could be on the street. So right. I think having that pressure, and then for me at that time, I was doing tax consulting. So, like, my job wasn't necessarily guaranteed. It was based on a client like basis, right. right? So, having that pressure of like, well, if I lose this contract, it's then over. it's over, right? Yeah. Um, and then like, my wife's trying to make it in her career. Um, and adding that pressure, like, well, I want to be able to provide so she can pursue that, right? Mm. Um, and seeing her being stressed out, it just yeah. just kept filling that cup. And then uh, for me, I, I stay pretty active. And, like, for me, I try to, like, sometimes I feel like moving fast mm -hmm. helps you forget stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was moving fast. I was doing a lot. Yeah. And when my 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 fraternity brother, the homie that came out, um, when he came out, I was like, I was already spread thin, right? Right. And I, all I was thinking was like, I want to be here for him, right? Right. And I remember we got up at like 4 a.m. I probably had about two hours of sleep before then. Oh. All, dealing with all this stress too. Right. Probably had, you know, about two monsters driving yeah. up. It's, and it's like about an eight hour, eight to 10 hour drive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just kind of pushing through that, mm. kind of hearing him unpack and trying to be there for him. Yeah. And just like get into that place where it's like I get to Oakland, I sit down, and I think it was just Yeah, it was just a combination of yeah, so many it things. Just, yeah. So for me I think it was just the stress from responsibility, mm -hmm. the stress from um finances mm -hmm. and just like feeling like the weight of your world and not really having a lot of folks to be there for you. Yeah, you know? man. So,